in our last class, we talked about creating visual filters. Visual filters are basically just searches applied to an entire resource. So here's an example. We can go to a search field, which can be accessed through here. Let's do a morphological search. And we will search for all of the Greek imperatives. Here's one, just so we know how to do that, you see type at to start a morphology term. So in search, click on morph and type at, and you'll see the parts of speech. We could say search for all verbs in the imperative mood. All right, if we did that and we applied it, say, to the book of Romans, we would be able to generate a list of all of the imperative verbs in Romans. And if we go down to Romans 12, which I have open over here, we'd be able to see that we have bless, curse, be wise, leave it, feed. Now that's, that's a very powerful search, to be able to not only search for words, but to be able to search for um, the morphological form of words. But what if we wanted to always have that search going, to see that overlaid on the text? Well, we can do that using visual filters. So to create a visual filter, you go to Documents. Now along the New column on the left, you go to New Visual Filter. Okay, so what we will call this is Sample Greek Verb Filter. We'll just call this Greek Filter. And so when we do that, we want to make sure that we're doing a morphological search. You can create a visual filter for basic searches. Say that for some reason you wanted to show, put in bold, every time the word therefore appeared in the text. You could do that. You would just click basic, find all text and all research sources. You would say therefore. Anytime therefore existed, you would put it in bold. Okay, that would, that would work. And uh, let's search for a therefore over here. And we'll, I'll show that that's now happening. Therefore. So you see now in, in Romans 13, 2, there is the text therefore. It's now bold. If I eliminate that search, that uh, filter, that goes away. Does that make sense? Basically what it's doing is it's creating that search. It's looking for the word therefore and applying the formatting that I wanted it to apply. Okay, we could do therefore and turn it blue. You'll see that happen in just a second. Therefore is blue. The way that you would turn that on and off under your three circle things, the bottom you have visual filters, you can have a filter turned on and off, which will apply your search formatting over the top of things. Now that's not a very powerful visual filter. You could certainly do it if you wanted to. In the Bible, for example, you could search for every time the word, um, let's just say that you were wanting, to, you were studying the word love. And we wanted to see every time that the word agape or any of its uh, variants appeared. So what you would do is you'd highlight the word love Right, we're going to go down to the lemma, so anytime it's tied to the word lemma, or we could actually tie it to the root, even. We could copy. Now we'd go find. Um, let's, let's actually tie it to the lemma, because we, root searching isn't that, it doesn't work very well. So we're going to tie it to the, the lemma. So we're going to search this resource. Well, we can do root. Search this resource. That will give us the search term for the root agapeo. Does that make sense? So what you did in order to generate the search was we hovered here. 
went to the root. We could do it on the lemma as well. The root searched this resource that generated this search term, which is bit. We will paste that in here and say that we want to uh, apply Um, I have a heart somewhere. Yeah, love. Say I wanted to apply that heart to every time love appeared in my Bible. Or the root agapeo in the Greek. Now you see what this is doing is it's not going to show up if I go to love in the Old Testament, but it will appear every time love shows up in the New Testament. Um, and with the root word agapeo, it won't appear, say, for um, other types of love, okay, which we should be able to, to find. So th that's another form of visual filter. Does that make sense? You're using the search and you're applying a f filter to the results. Now in class, we did a very powerful visual filter that I'd recommend that you all have on your, um, in your library. We're gonna do a morphological filter. Okay, you can do this in Greek or Hebrew. When you do that, you need to search. If you're doing Greek, you need to make sure that you're on morph. You wanna search a Greek morphology. Logos Greek morphology. We're going to search for all morphological text in all passages. You could change this to New Testament if you wanted to. It really won't matter because your uh, Old Testament text won't be tagged with Greek morphology. So what you do, do you remember how to start a morphological search? You start with the and sign. We're going to have verb. Let's mark all imperative verbs. This is all commands. We want those to stand out. Let's mark them green. Watch what happens over in our text. Now all of a sudden our commands jump out at us. There might be some, some types of words that we want, don't want to confirm, don't want to confuse with the main verb. Remember we talked about that in class. We talked about um, participles. Participles, right, they're, they're a word that has a characteristic of both a verb and an adjective. In English we often put ing at the end of it. These um, do not, right, they can function, it says here, and this is accurate, they can function in an imperative sense, but um, they are not the main verb, which means um, they, they generally are, are functioning to describe main verb or, or a noun. So what we want to do is let's put that in gray. All right, so what we're going to do is we're not going to confuse our participles like be of the same mind, this looks like, in verse 16, this looks like a command in English, in paratival. And that doesn't mean that in Greek there isn't a command sense to this word, but it certainly is not coordinate with, say, these words in green, which are clearly commands. In Greek, they would not be confused. that They have an imperatival sense that they are in the imperatival form, whereas you can see that these other words like um, abhor what is evil, cling to what's good, give preference to one another. These things are um, are not main verbs. I apologize for my wife's text popping into the screen. She is checking out at the grocery store. So anyway, what we did was we just created a morphological search for this. One other thing that's helpful to do, we did this in class, is say on pronouns. Pronouns the second person, right, you. In English, you is singular and you is plural. You know, in the South, you say y'all. But we don't do that in English, whereas in Greek, it was obvious whether it was a, a you um, single or you plural. So this is a helpful thing where if you go pronoun, second person, singular, you can format that with a single underline. Whereas, right, you do at, pronoun, second person, plural, you can format that with 
a double underline. Okay, so now um, any time that you have um, Pronoun, second person, plural, double underline. So you see here, be, never be wise in your own sight. See how that's a pronoun? That sounds like you might be talking to an individual, but it's obvious here. So far as it depends on you, your own, never take your own revenge, don't be wise in your own estimation. It's not obvious whether Paul's talking to an individual or a group of people. This double underline makes it obvious now. Paul is talking to multiple people. He's saying, don't be wise in y'all's estimation. So far as it depends on y'all, be at peace with all men. You all never take your own revenge. The context would be obvious. Paul's writing this to a church, not to an individual. You know, whereas in say, 1 Timothy, you're going to find probably a lot more single underlines, as I urged you. Some basically things that might not be quite as obvious in English as in Greek. You have single. You're not going to get a whole lot of plurals when Paul's writing an individual letter where you will to a group, you know, before I come to you. But it's a helpful thing to, to bring out what might be behind the text. Now, I do want to comment that this will only work in New Testaments that have a reverse interlinear behind them. At the time of making this video, the Holman Christian Bible does not have a reverse interlinear to it. So you'll see when I open up, say, Romans 12... To in um, the Holman Christian, you see we, we don't have the green and gray because there is no text behind it. There is no Greek text tagged to the text, whereas in the NAS, ESV, NIV, texts that have a reverse interlinear, there is uh, a reverse interlinear with the parsing done for you. I hope that's helpful. If you have any specific questions or need specific examples of how to make a filter, please ask. Other ideas of filters that you can do that I have done before are using um, searching a text for, say, Yahweh and changing the, the word from the Lord to Yahweh in the text. Um, I can show that example if you would like. And, uh, you know, it, in the New Testament, bond servant, anytime the word doulos is behind, um, I, changing that word to slave. You can do all kinds of things with visual filters. Sky's the limit. But I hope that this video shows you some examples to get you going.